Hello there, Rabbi. How are you this bright and sunny morning? Well, after a gloomy, rainy day here in D.C. yesterday, the sun is shining. It's supposed to go up to the 80s. It's a beautiful day, Joe. Yes, and it's lovely in that last night I finally made a Passover Seder. You and I have discussed many times how it's not important to follow all the ritualistic aspects of the Passover Seder so much as the moral imperatives, the emotional reasoning, and the family connections that are built during a Passover Seder. At the same time, I observed, without going into all the many details of it, how important it was to our hostess who was conducting the Seder, cleaning the house with a feather, selling off her, how do you say it, hamets? Hamets, yep. Oh, uh, hamets. To uh, the neighbor for a dollar, taping up walls and, and eliminating every aspect of dust. She even put her toaster in a plastic bucket outside the house because she didn't think she could get all the crumbs out of it. And, you know, we have in the past said this is not necessary. There is that positive aspect to following all the steps and doing the dance in just the right way, isn't there? I, I think I don't want to give people the impression of wanting to eliminate ritual. A ritual is bad. That's not my point. My point is the point of the Hebrew prophets, the biblical prophets, the literary prophets. And our criteria is, is the ritual helpful? Is it comforting? Does it do something for you? Or is it an excuse for bad behavior? And for the majority, we watch religions professing ritual, but not fulfilling the moral obligations of the religion. And it becomes an excuse well, I go to services every week. Therefore, the fact that I cheat people, the fact that the scales of my store are wrong, that's fine. I don't focus on that. I keep focusing on I'm fulfilling the ritual. You're describing exactly what ritual should do for us. It should make us feel good. It should get us to behave better towards each other. And uh, to go to the biblical prophets... All the biblical prophets had the same uh, statement. They were denouncing moral decay. They were denouncing social injustice. They were denouncing insecure piety. And that's what I'm talking about when I say we fulfill the rituals, but we don't act civilly in the supermarket. They also denounced the lack of concern for the poor or needy. Violence against each other was condemned. Using violence and war to get one's ends. Lying and cheating for self-aggrandizement, to make money, to sell books. Any of these things. So the prophets focus on what is it that God wants, what's the message, and ritual are, are reminders to do those things. The biblical prophets, their pronouncements still stand because people today, insincere piety, people will use their religion and say, I'm a good Christian, I'm a good Jew, I'm a good Muslim, and then go out and not do what is morally right. Now, you're describing something very personal. Rituals will work. And they're very helpful. And they allow me to deal with illness and death and loneliness, lots of things. They're very positive. They're very positive in what they do. That's personal and unusual. Most of the time what we read about it, in fact, the biblical, let me read you Amos. I hate your festivals. I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of your fattened animals, I will not look upon. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. 
the prophets wouldn't have said that if the people were doing the right thing. But they were using ritual fulfillment as an excuse for not doing what is morally right. And if you look at the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, Jesus is just repeating these same things. And why are they repeating them if people were using ritual to do the right thing? And Amos goes on to say, seek good and not evil, you may live. Hate evil and love good. It's And Isaiah continues, I've had enough of your rams, I've had enough of your Passover seders, I've had enough of your rituals. Learn to do good, do justice, rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead the widow, feed the hungry, house the homeless. So the prophets continue with this message to constantly remind us not to fall into that trap of thinking that because I'm doing the ritual, I put my toaster in a bucket in the garage Therefore, I'm a good person. The idea is, oh, I'm supposed to feed the hungry. Oh, I'm supposed to have housing, a fair wage. That is the goal of putting the toaster in the bucket. Now, for a lot of us, we do that. A lot of Jews, Christians, and Muslims fulfill the rituals, and they do what is morally right. They have honest business. That's the system. That's what... God wants of us. However, Jesus wouldn't have said what he said if people were doing that. And the prophets wouldn't. Martin Luther King, Kennedy, and we've had modern day prophets. And we still hear, do the right thing and let the rituals remind you of what is the right thing. Well, I know my right thing, Rabbi, and that is coming to you for your wit, wisdom, and opinions, and knowledge. Thank you, as always. And the prophet Isaiah said, loose the bonds of injustice, reduce, remove the yoke, let the oppressed go free. And politics gets involved, and sometimes individuals let their religious beliefs. So that's my message for everyone. Let's do the rituals that remind us to live moral lives and actually follow God's teachings.